the spiritual man. Praise God. We understand from scriptures that man is a triune entity. That is, man is three in one. Man is a spirit, he has a soul, and he lives in a body. As simple as this thing is, many, many people in the body don't understand it. How do I know? It shows in the way we live their life. Yes. How do you know they don't understand it? It shows in the way they live their lives. A pastor who is every day greedy for money, it shows me that he doesn't understand this simple thing that man is a spirit, he has a soul in the body. He doesn't understand it. Money doesn't hold water in the spirit world. So if you understand that you are a spirit, you will pay more attention to your spirit and forget the greed. The greed for money is, a, is, is, is an outflow of your flesh consciousness. The greed for money is, is a manifestation of your flesh. Flesh. So it tells you that man doesn't understand that he is a spirit. He thinks he is a body. So if he doesn't take on the body, he is not alive. It's as simple, but many people don't understand it. How do I know? The way they live that shows you. Man is a spirit. Genesis 1 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created in him. Male, female created in him. God's intrinsic nature is spirit. Genesis 4 24. God is spirit. So. If God created man in his own image, the intrinsic nature of man, of God, is what? Spirit. So the very first nature that man carried was the spirit nature. Is the spirit nature. Now in chapter 2 verse 7, the Bible says, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That is where the soul and the body were formed. So man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. With the spirit, man relates to God. With the soul, man relates to his intellectual being. He relates to his... The soul is the persona of man. That is what shows the being of the man. We call it self-conscious. That is what makes you who you are. The soul has the will, the emotions, and the mind, the intellect. And with the body, man relates to his environment. But fundamentally, man is a spirit. If you understand that we are spirit, we will not be so careful about we will not be so careful about the soul and the body to the detriment of the spirit. We don't understand it. For instance, when you are carry, carrying a bottle of coke in your hand, you are holding the bottle firm not because of the bottle, because of the content. So when you are going to buy coke, you are not buying bottle. You don't eat the bottle. What you are buying is the coke, but the coke resides in a bottle. In a bottle. So you are holding the bottle firm. You are paying and they are giving you a bottle. But it's the coke you are paying for. If you have a choice, you just let them pour the coke for you and then take their bottle. So your attention is on the coke. So when that bottle breaks, you don't say, Hey, you broke my bottle. No, what did you say? You pour my coke away. <laughs> you pour away my coke. Buy my coke. You say buy a bottle for me. No, buy my coke for me. Not buy a bottle for me because you don't buy. If we understand this simple analogy, we will pay more attention to the spirit man. The reason many people don't pay attention, many Christians don't pay attention to their spirit man is simply because they don't understand this thing. They don't know that they are real self is spirit. They don't know. So they go about taking that, taking that, you know, we buy brand new suits where, you know, Good suit, dress well, go for pedicure, manicure, nanicure. 
We cure everything. But our spirit is sick. We cure the body, but our spirit is sick. So we cannot maximize the best of God. When you are in the world, what you are taking care of the spirit. When you are in prayers, you are taking care of the spirit. Because that is where your destiny springs from. It is from there that your life is being made from. God created you for spirit. He formed the clay and breathed the breath of life. So when the spirit and the flesh came together, they birthed the soul. So, the reason many people make weak decisions because their spirit is weak. So the flesh is having the dominant place in their soul structure. When the spirit is weak, the flesh is strong. When the spirit is strong, the flesh is weak. The soul is just a catalyst. It's an intermediary. So, when the spirit is strong, it influences the soul in its direction. And the soul also pulls the body along to the spirit. When the flesh is stronger than the spirit, it influences the soul. So the soul pulls the spirit in direction. So it, it can lead to satanic influence over the spirit of man. God steps outside. And the man, that is the spirit of man, is under satanic affliction. Why? He is not taking care of the spirit. The spirit is weak, sickly, and dying. You are spirit. We eat every day to feed the flesh. We read every day to feed the mind. What do you do to feed the spirit? That's how we fast. That's how we pray. That's how we study scriptures. So that your spirit can be buoyant enough to birth your great destiny. You know, when a woman is going to deliver and then she, she has pushed, pushed and then she is weak. Sometimes she tries to push again, she may die. Have you? But they say she has no more strength to push. So you see yes. So you need strength to push your destiny to bear. And that strength is not physical strength. It's not in a gym. It's not mental strength. The foundational strength you need to bear your destiny is spiritual strength. That is why we call for spirituality. Spirituality is not to put a weight on you. Let's say they are limiting me. You know, I'm not enjoying life. You don't understand. You lack understanding. When I say be spiritual, we are not trying to put a limitation on anybody. All we are doing is to call us to that place whereby we can be able to bend our spiritual destiny. Simple. So, little, little things that brings carnality. You need to let them go. Let them go. Praise God. In First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three, the, and the very God of peace Himself sanctify you holy. And I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that scripture also tells us that man is triune in nature. Triune in nature. Hebrews four twelve. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit that's two, and the joint and the marrow, that's the flesh that tells us that man is triune in nature triune in nature when a man begins to accept spiritual responsibility to be spiritual that is where the journey of the spirit life begins so, you cannot explore the possibilities of God in redemption until you are spiritual. They are a great, great store of possibilities in God made available to the believer but can only be explored by the spiritual. So, spirituality is not even the whole thing. It's just the foundation. 
the spiritual man. The spiritual living is just is the foundation. For instance, you cannot expect to hear the audible voice of God until you can hear the written word of God. If you are not following the written word and you are praying to hear the audible voice, you hear the devil. Simple. Don't expect to see angels if you are not being spiritual. You see the devil. You see demons. Simple. Don't expect to have visionary encounters if you are not spiritual. All those things are the preserve, exclusive preserve of the spiritual. They are not things you pick on the street. They are not. Don't expect your faith to work if you are not spiritual. Because faith doesn't work in abstract. Faith works only for the spiritual. So spirituality or spiritual living is the foundation for an adventure of the spirit for the believer. And you know we are called for that. John 3 verse 8. John 3 verse 8. You see the wind blows when it, it desires. You don't know where it is coming from or where it is going. So is every man born of the spirit. So you are called to have an adventure of the spirit. Exploring the possibilities of God, domicile in your redemptive spirit. But you cannot until you accept the demands of the spiritual life. That's so when you are playing Shatawale, what you are deflecting your spiritual reserve. Because you are either stuffing the flesh or stuffing the spirit. Simple. Very important. So we tell believers that you know, live clean, live spiritual, get close to God, study your scriptures. They say, what is it? Am I a pastor? Because he does not understand that that is the, fun, the foundation for exploring the world of the spirit that is available to him. There are unlimited possibilities in God, only accessible by the spiritual, the spiritual man. Unlimited possibilities in God, but can only be assessed by you in spiritual. For instance, don't expect to flow in inspiration if you're not spiritual. Don't expect it. Don't expect it. You can't flow in divine ideas if you're not spiritual. You may flow in other ideas, it's not divine. Don't expect to flow in scriptures. If you are not spiritual, no, you cannot love until you are spiritual because many at times people do things that are not worth, you know, love worthy. Hallelujah! You cannot love, on, that is why I say that to a man and not believer is uh, to commit suicide. I mean, he cannot love, an unbeliever can never ever love. No, Pastor, you are too harsh. Bible says so. God is love. So it is God in the man that is loving people. Not the man. God in the man loving people. So the man who doesn't have God in his spirit cannot love anybody. He may be emotional about you. Fine. He's not love. Because when that emotion comes under fire, he will give up. Because you cannot afford to marry anybody who is not spiritual. I'm not saying uh, all these creepy people who has some poor people sleeping in girls in church? A man who knows God. A man who is pressing into God. A woman pressing into God. Hallelujah. There are possibilities in God but can only be accessed by the spiritual. 2021 is not just a year, it's a spiritual year. Hmm. Because it came from God. Therefore, it carries spiritual blessings. And those blessings can only be explored when you are on your mountain of spirituality. So, times in prayer, times in the world, they are not wasted times. They are times that you are building yourself into God to explore the vast possibilities available for you in redemption. Redemption. Hallelujah. It is accepting a new lifestyle that is called spirituality. That is the beginning of an adventure in the spirit. 
Many people say they are born again and they refuse to accept the lifestyle of their Christian life. They don't want it. They, they, they still want to be in church, call themselves Christians and still be doing things like the world. They dress like the world. They talk like the world. They dance like the world. They go to the club and go and see dance steps and come and dance it in church. They do hairstyle like the world. They dress their dresses out. All manner of things. And they call themselves Christian. They are not. Christianity is not an identity. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of the called at once. Christianity means called out. We are being called out from the world to a new kingdom. So we are living a life of a new kingdom. We are not living a life of the world any longer. So to call yourself a Christian and still carry the identity of the world, you are not born again. You are not. You can be a bishop. It doesn't swear nothing. You are not. You are not. Where is it written in your Bible? In your Bible. That you should be drinking alcohol and still call yourself a bishop. Where well, you need to hear that drunkards shall not in the kingdom of God. That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost that don't pollute it. Bible says, if kings drink alcohol, they pervert judgment. Is it not in your Bible? Where is it written that you can still be having girlfriends apart from husband? You're not married, sleeping with girls, touching breasts of girls in corner corner, hugging girls here and there, and you still call yourself a Christian. You are not. Call a spade a spade. Let's stop pumping people into hell. Let's stop pumping. Tell them the truth. Let's stop pumping the Lord. If God loves you, it's okay. God loves you. God loves each one of him. Bible says the Lord is angry perpetually with the wicked person. With the wicked person. A wicked one is the one who does not want to live by God's standard. God is still destroying Sodom and Gomorrah today. Oh. He's still doing it. You are not. When we say this, people think we are legalistic. No. Yes, God loves you. Do you love him? Do you also love him? Yes, I have you really love him. I go to church. Yeah, yeah, that's not it. I live to please him. That's my love for him. One day I went to the park and said, Father, I know you love me. Help me to love you back. I was in tears. His presence just overwhelmed him. Overwhelmed me. Help me just to that's the only prayer I was praying for two, three, four hours. Help me to love you in return. I know you love me, but help me to reciprocate this love. Help me not to be a, a consumer of your love alone. Let me also love you back. How do you say you are loving him if you are hating him? Sin hates God. He hates God. You think God has, God has feelings? He hates him. So don't tell me you are born again if you are still living extraordinary lives. <laughs> that is not in the curriculum given us. You are not married. Forget sex. Don't be kissing girls. Don't be touching them in corner corner. Don't. You are not. You are. You can come and see people fall under You know, is that anointing? They are under your, your devilish influence. Demonic influence. If you want to be a Christian, be a Christian. You want to be a Buddhist, go away. Simple. Go away. Leave us alone. Leave us. Don't come and muddy the waters. But this thing, spiritual living, is at the root of any destiny of exploit. Any in the kingdom. Any in the kingdom. A people after the heart of God. Psalm 63 verse 8. He said, my soul followed hard after thee, O God. And thy right hand upholded me. Let me tell you something. When God sends a man on assignment, he sends him to open the seal of the world for them to achieve a dimension of God. Hand it to that man. When God sends anybody, like God sends me, I didn't join ministry. I was sent. I didn't join. Let's say, let's join. Let's call, I'll, be, I'll be him too. No, I was sent. 
So when God sends a man like he has sent me, he hands to him a dimension in him, God, that the generation he sent him must experience. Then he gives him the right, the privilege of teaching the people the ways that will get there. Job 33, verse 22. He said, if there be a messenger with him, one among a thousand, to show man his uprightness, then he shall deliver him. Deliver him from going as repeat, I have found a ransom. So when God sends a man, he makes him a messenger of the truth. One among a thousand, within the scope of his mandate, to teach men they are uprightness in God, the ways of God. Then they begin to experience the possibilities in God within that scope of assignment. Listen to me. You can never fulfill destiny until you are rooted in God. Never. If you see anybody, show me the person. Never. In this kingdom, never. Never. You can never maximize your destiny in God until you are rooted in God. All those who are faking it, it will show very soon. It will show. It will show. It will show. You have a glorious destiny. No two ways about it. But great must be your pursuit of God. Great must be your spiritual buoyancy. Great must be your investment in the spirit. He said, those that uh, invest in the spirit shall reap life everlasting. Those that invest in the flesh shall reap corruption. Invest in your spirit, man. When a wind of evil blows, what makes you stand in your money? No, not your money. It's your spiritual agility, your spiritual strength, your spiritual capacity, your investment in the spirit. That's what starts. So the prayer altar is not to pray for Abraham. It's not to pray for destiny Sunday. It's to pray for you and yourself. And don't be deceived that anybody is praying for you. Don't be deceived. Never be deceived. If I spend two hours on a prayer altar and I want to pray for you, unless you're a special project, unless, if I spend 10 minutes on your case, I've tried. Unless you're a special project that I've taken to God with a body. But I'm praying that remember you in prayer. I remember your father, remember Joshua. Thank you, Father. Now, Lord, anoint me. <laughs> Unless you are a special project I'm taking to the prayer altar. Learn to labor yourself. There's no excuse turnable for non-spiritual investment. No excuse. Because no excuse is acceptable by Satan for not attacking you. There's no excuse turnable for non-spiritual investment. Because no excuse is acceptable by the enemy for attacking you. It doesn't take excuses. Say, uh, wait, I didn't pray in general, so don't attack me. That's the only thing that's coming. The year is loaded. But can only be maximized by those who invest. Because for every physical thing you will ever see has a spiritual root. If you lay hold on the spirit, you can control the physical. But if you let go of the spirit, you have let go of the physical. You can never maximize your life in God until you are rooted on the spiritual order. It is accepting a new last of course, spirituality. That is the beginning of an adventure of the spirit. Galatians 5.16 It says, This I say then, Galatians 5.16 What in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. So, Walking in the spirit is the greatest prerequisite not to be carnal or walking in the flesh for the believer. So many, many people call themselves Christians, they walk in the flesh every day. Every day. The flesh rules their life. Oh, they are ruled by the flesh. Ruled by the flesh. Ruled by the flesh. Therefore, it is important for us to labor 
to bring our redemptive spirit under the dominant influence of the Holy Ghost so as to be effective in the journey of destiny. Destiny is glorious but can be smothered without a spiritual outlook of life. If you take life casually, you end a casualty. If you, if you take your spirituality anyhow, you end up anyhow. But in the name of Jesus, none of us are any anyhow. None of us are any anyhow. None of us are any anyhow. What then are the elements of keeping a spiritual life or the spiritual man? What are the elements of the spiritual man? What are the practices? You know, these things are not rocket science. They are simple daily practices. Many important spirituality means you have to no simple daily practice. I was telling somebody, you uh, know, over the weekend. I see the weekend actually. That was on Friday. But look, to be spiritual doesn't take anything. If you can give yourself 30 minutes on a prayer altar, 30 minutes in the world, every day, consistently, eh? by the time you have hit three months in that practice, yourself, you know you are spiritual. You know. Because the flesh will lose power. The flesh will be weak. That is why after in after those people who fast and pray in January, February, first, week, second week, they are like spirit, very spiritual. They are very spiritual. <laughs> they are very spiritual. It's as if they and God are waking up from bed every day. Very spiritual. But just wait. Let them enter match. <laughs> then still, still stop marching forward. Because they have not sustained their ability to keep servicing that altar. Everything you do in general must be serviced all through the months of the year. So you must sustain. If you fast the whole of January, you can't say, okay, I fast the January, so I won't fast again a year. No. Because that fire will, can carry only to match everybody. You must have a, an altar of servicing that consistently. That is the way upward. Your destiny is glorious but can only be maximized when you are spiritual. Because your destiny is an outflow of the God in you. One word God gave me for the year 2021 is unleash the God in you. Come in. Unleash. Your success is unleashing the God in you to a generation. Your destiny is unleashing the God in you. Your exploit is a dimension of God inside you in fashion, in academics, in preaching ministry, in business, in whatever that God called you into. There is a dimension of God in you that must be unleashed. But it takes spirituality to push it out. If you are not you cannot push it out. You will be laboring in the flesh. Success is spiritual. It's not physical. That is why that statement being made as prayer is a question. It's a carnal statement. It's a carnal statement. It's wrong. Success is spiritual. When God met the man Joshua to give him a template for his success, he gave him spiritual commands. He didn't send him to the university. Spiritual commands. No matter what you know out there. Without the foundation of spirituality, you can't get there. Ah, you want to ask God about those people who are getting there without God? Don't worry. Don't worry. Just check the others of their life. Don't ask, you know, they have a dark world behind them. Very dark world. Nobody succeeds in this world. Big, I'm not talking about paying rent and taking care of school fees and having uh, one two-bedroom house or three-bedroom house with two cars, one big car for one small car for your wife, and then. That's what it is. Success affecting a generation. You must have something behind you. Either God or Satan. All those who are, who are, who are, who are shouting at them. Uh, when COVID came, Africa, Africa should be down on the street. You, you think they are only postulating things? They are feeding their demons behind them. Africa will work and fall on the street. Have we died? They are not just 
talking. No, they are talking from a dark wall. And they are trying to do everything to make sure it happens. But they have failed. And they will keep failing forever. Forever. Africa may not have medicine or scientists. We are God. Man, we are God. The only thing that helped with COVID-19 was God. God. We push it away by the power of prayers. They won't come and learn it. <laughs> Praise God. What are the daily practices or elements of the spiritual man? Number one is prayer. <laughs> prayer. Prayer. Prayer is an indispensable part of the spiritual life. That is the way to keep our spirit man saturated with God perpetually. We keep our spirit man saturated with God perpetually. We keep our spirit man saturated with God perpetually on the prayer altar. Without prayer, your spiritual life will die. Will die. That is how we keep our spiritual life service perpetually. Service perpetually. Without prayer, your spiritual engine will knock. Your car will stop. You can't move again. So we keep our spiritual life service on the altar of prayers. Altar of prayer. Perpetual praying as a lifestyle. Luke 18 verse 1. Men ought always to pray and not to fail. Men us always to pray. So prayer is not a thing you do once in a while. It's a thing you do once and again. Once and again. You have your prayer time that you are praying consistently on it. If it's 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you have that one on. Prayer all that. But you have everyday per second prayer. You are in the office. You take five minutes away. She yagada to zoo the car. In the toilet, in the bath, no men casuale, bujiale, brano, suzaleka, shengaga, se solakata. Your spirit man is chuck back. You go back to your desk. You are there. I'm not five minutes. Monomati zano, mare macheta, mobile, kadosha. If you have your own cubicle, you lock it up. Mamboma, bembolaba. What you do? You are keeping your environment filled with God perpetually. When that environment is filled with God, it will be empty to the enemy. You are in school. You have break time. Don't go chatting. Chaka 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 chaka. No. Le moma pila be shialo. Radia tatana. Revlash. Revlash. You will take 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. They are not fast rules about prayer. Just pray. That's the whole thing. Jesus will be in a meeting. Then as they are finished preaching and then they are taking their testimony, he's come to the back door to the mount to go and pray. Because he must keep his life in this world, we are surrounded by evil perpetually. You can only keep yourself godly by prayer. When you are praying, you are sanitizing your environment, you are detoxing your spirit man. Prayer is spiritual detoxification. Prayers is spiritual detoxification. So any death the enemy accumulates in you to the side, to your hearing, to your environment, in prayer you detox. You detox. Pigamash, Losizarish, Frecolabisos, Nagalesha, Gevenos, Abracos, Lefriandos, Azi para para para, Repenekeshua Lilozanos, Nepalika, Ratesho, Lebracano Talia, Yeshua Sosono, Malia, the Tanomasi. You are detoxing your spirit man. You are keeping your spirit man perpetually at two with God. That is how we flow in inspiration. That is how you can be flowing in God. That is how God can be giving you insight, ideas, directions. Why? You are perpetually attuned to him. Men ought always to pray. Number two way. We keep our spiritual life on fire, service perpetually, is with the word of God. The word of God. 
the word of God. It takes a strong spirit to carry a strong glory. It takes a strong spirit to carry the strong glory of God. Bible said, as you behold him in the glass. Second Corinthians 3.18 We are changed from glory to glory as by the spirit of God. Now, so, your change from glory to glory is, as a, is a function of your change from world level to world level. As you behold him in the mirror of the world, we are changed from glory to glory. So the more you stay in the world, the more glory you accumulate in yourself. Imagine Moses. Moses was talking to God. God was talking to him for 40 days. When he came down, he carried God on his face. He was radiating the glory of God. So anytime you stay in the world, you wake up with glory. Anytime you stay in the world, you go and diffuse your glory. We diffuse glory in the world, we partake of glory in the world of God. In the word of God. Matthew 4.4, 4, Luke 4.4. 4. It says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Every word of God. Every Old Testament, New Testament, every word of God. There are no ideal words in scriptures. Every word in scripture is put there by God for your profiting. It says, all scriptures is given by God. And it is good for profiting. It is profitable unto direction for doctrine, for instruction to make the man of God perfect. So your spiritual life thrives on the world. It's a daily practice. It's not a weekly thing. Some people's Bible, they don't open it until Sunday. You can't be strong like that. You feed on the word, you exercise in prayers. <laughs> you feed on the word, you exercise in prayers. Monday go, shiele garabos are here. Sansan, shwakeke, shwakeke. Because you have dug out some mysteries in the world, then you diffuse it in yourself. You digest it in prayers. Finally, what are the Daily practices. Of the spiritual life. Consistent living by the fruit of the spirit. Consistent. The moment a man gets born again. His spirit man is reborn. That spirit man bears fruit called the fruit of the spirit. So it's not the fruit of the Holy Ghost, no, it's the fruit of the human reborn spirit. So you must you can consciously match your spirituality level by the amount of or the level or the intensity of the fruit of the spirit. Being back in your life. Galatians 5 22. He said, Now, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Those are nine fruits of the Spirit. They are nine out for out manifestation of the Spirit of God inside your spirit. So your spirit man bears those fruits. If you are not bearing those fruits, your spiritual life is dying. Any tree not bearing fruit is that is dying. You cannot plant mango tree and not see mango after 10 years. Is that a mango tree? That's not mango tree. It has died. Cut it down. Why come back in the ground? So your spirit Spirit, your reborn human spirit has fruit it must bear. When the Holy Ghost lives inside your spirit man, 
it impregnates your spirit man to give birth to these dimensions of God. Love, joy, peace, patience, long suffering, temperance, meekness. We are proud because we don't allow this pregnancy of the Holy Ghost in our spirit man to be bad. Proud generation. Proud generation. We are too proud. Angry by something. No. No. We can't love. We can't forgive. We can't let go. No. Patience. No. Everything. Blah, 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 blah. No. They are the fruit of the spirit. Listen to me. The Bible is the only answer to the woes of the world. See those knife of the spirit? If any nation make that the loss of a nation, there will not be no crime. No crime. No hell anywhere. Because those are the answers to the social vices we are trying to correct in the world. Love. Faith. Meekness. Temperance. Joy. Joy. Peace. The peace of God. Love, those meekness, 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 those are the manifestation of a person who is born again. If you cannot see in his life or her life, she is not, or he's not. Or better say, he has aborted the pregnancy. Those are the bro. So consistently striving. To live, it doesn't mean anger will not come. Anger will come. You tell anger, no, no, no. I am born again. I am born again. This thing, long suffering, is in my spirit, man. I'll bet it. You will not rob me. Patience. 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 I have a slogan, nothing there. Forget it. Take it easy. Take it, it's nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing in there. If I hear from God, forget it. I am as patient as anything. In any way, you see me no patient, that I don't hear from God. If I hear from God, forget it. Patience can measure it. You can measure your spiritual life by this element. And when you commit yourself to daily practice and engagement of this element, I can guarantee you your spiritual life will be full of fire. Praise God. Full of fire. You are not spiritual because you are gen, 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 activity conscious. No. You are spiritual because these things flow out of your life. The person who prays because he is leading prayer is not a prayer warrior. So you see them. When they come to pray, they come and carry my Ah, oh, are you, are you, are you? it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. Stop deceiving us. You don't pray. One day I went somewhere, I was leading prayer. Then one came. I said, Stop, 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 stop. I said, Pray for you. Don't pray for yourself. Don't come in. Don't come and boost my prayer. Pray for yourself. They don't pray. They don't pray. They only make the noise when they are on the mic leading prayers. It shows in their life. You can't be a prayer warrior if you're not praying on your own. People only preach because they open the Bible. You are not a world warrior. A world warrior lives by the world, in the world, every day, perpetually, 247. Don't tell me you are meek because uh, you are poor. Your meekness won't have money. Even they are half faith. Why do you not have faith? Things are working for me. It's a lie. It is when things are not working out that you know they have faith or not. Hey, because faith is your anchor when things are not working. So when you want to have your money, you say things are working, you're gonna have faith. They lie. You let one attack come. Let me see how you react. Then I know you have faith. I have it. People say, okay, I am very humble. He said, like he's hungry. He's not humble. <laughs> he's not humble, he's only hungry. He doesn't have money to. Some people that think they are holy, they are not for the kids. They lie. They don't have money to fuel their desire. 
They don't have money. No girl wants them. So they are in church. They are saying, yeah, me, I don't fornicate. I am holy. And no girl wants you because you don't have money. Have some money now and just pep up yourself. Let, let some suits, you know, like, like, uh, is looking now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you want to talk to you. <laughs> you know, just pep up yourself. Let your small beer come with the white inside. <laughs> then put some uh, some cologne within yourself and then uh, just feel good and enter the street. Let girls see you. Hey, baby, I, I just like it. I just like it. I just like it. You see that all your team talking about just fly away. Chip, all this. You see, it means that you were not spiritual. You were only practicing. You were acting. When small money comes now, you see people begin to misbehave because they have small money. They are not humble. They are only hungry. Don't say the poor is humble. He's not humble. He's only poor. The true test of a man's humility is seen when he's in power of resources and people. That's when a man is truly humble. When you are still in power, you can do anything you want to do. But you still subject that power to God. Then you are humble. Oh, then you are humble. People say me, I don't like spending money. He doesn't have the money to spend. Let him get money now. He will spend it. On things unnecessary. So he is not frugal. He is only not having the money to spend. Praise God. So you must cultivate those things yourself. Those are the fruit of a life of the spirit. The spiritual man. Part one. Rest your feet. Lift your voice. Father, receive grace to accept full responsibility for my spiritual life. Lift your voice. I receive grace. I receive grace, Jesus. I receive grace, Jesus. Give me grace for a prayer life. Give me grace.